Nativity from four perspectives. And uh, I had hoped that uh, some of you would kind of catch that there are those who say there are no references or no nativity stories in two, two books of the Gospels. Uh, Matthew carries one. Luke carries one. But a lot of the Bible scholars say that... Um, that Mark does not. And so what we want to do is join with you today and talk a little bit about the Nativity according to the Gospel of Mark. And uh, I hope that you'll find this interesting uh, because some people think that uh, Mark left this out because he didn't believe in it. And omission is not necessarily meaning non-belief. Remember I said in the first of this series of four that these gospel writers were covering all of the kind of culture that we need the gospel story to go to. And in this particular case, Mark is particular in that he's very terse, he's very focused, and he's writing to a Gentile audience. Now, what does that mean? Well, Matthew was writing to the Jewish audience, and they had to have all of this about the prophecies and about the Old Testament concepts and all of that. But Mark, he wrote his gospel from the perspective of addressing those who were not raised in Jewish culture. Even though we remember there, if you go back and look at the one from Matthew, Herod was not very good at being Jewish or biblical as a scholar, was he? No. But Mark is assuming now his audience, probably more for our contemporary audience, it's a quick synopsis. It doesn't take very long for him to write his gospels. It's not extended, it's not uh, uh, verbose. And so he writes it for people who want to understand what happened. So Mark picks up his narrative, even though there's some similarities in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark, Mark picks up his narrative at the spiritual birth of Jesus, what we might say his baptism. Now a lot of people say, why was Jesus baptized? Well, he answers that question here when he addressed John the Baptist and said, I must be baptized to fulfill all righteousness. So in other words, it would have been a sin for Jesus not to have been baptized. And so for those of you who are struggling with this concept of baptism, I would encourage you to take a look at Mark when he kind of begins his narrative with that spiritual birth or that confirmation of Jesus' uh, Messiah, Messianic uh, walk or journey. And it's, it's pretty important. But that's for another day. Today we want to talk about Mark did have a narrative. It's quick, short, basic, just like he did for all those Gentiles who were not um, versed in the Jewish traditions or in the Jewish law or in the Jewish prophecies. So here we go. This is found over in Mark chapter 6. So for those who, scholars that I read in preparation to do this series for you who said he never mentions it wrong, they be wrong because he does mention it in Mark 6. Let's look at it. And he went out from that place and came into his own country, and that being place of his birth, and his disciples follow him. And on the Sabbath day when he was come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many of those hearing him were astonished. And many said, From whence? Have this man come to know these things? And what wisdom is that which he's given unto him, the insights, that he could also do such mighty works that are wrought by his hands? Is this not the carpenter? Is this not the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simon, and are not his sisters with us here? And all these people were offended that he was teaching in such a mighty way. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, and in his own house. We're going to stop there because this is the narrative of Jesus' birth. And you're saying, now wait a minute, Dave, there's no, there's no shepherds. There's no wise men, there's no gold, frankincense, and myrrh. There's no stable, there's no star. 
Well, now wait a minute. In this particular narrative that Mark picks up on, he gives us a clue of several items that we already know from Matthew's account. They are accepted accounts, already accepted about this life of Jesus. First of all, he came out of this place where he was before into his own country, which is at Bethlehem of Judea. So he, he was traveling around and he goes to Bethlehem. And his disciples followed him. And on a Sabbath day, which was the teaching day at that time, the special day for the Jews, he began to teach in the synagogue. It was a celebration day. And all those people who heard him were astonished at his words. So they were already astonished of his gospels. And saying, wait a minute, how does this man know these things? How can he teach these things? Where did he come from to do this? They knew that he had been born in Bethlehem of Judea. And what wisdom? So they already knew that he was a very wise person. How this give, given to him that he did mighty works? So here Mark is saying he's born in Bethlehem of Judea. He goes back to Judea. His own countrymen are aghast at his capabilities, at his abilities to do mighty works, miracles. How did this all happen? He's a guy from here. So they're struggling with this concept. Now remember, Mark's writing to the Gentiles. So Mark has to prove to the Gentiles, this is the Messiah person you should listen to. So he's preaching a gospel that astounds people. And he also does mighty works. And so that's going to attract this Gentile audience. Because you have to appeal to your market. Sorry for putting that in kind of carnal terms, but it's true. That's what Mark was doing, appealing to the Gentile mind, uh, the non-Jewish mind. And here's the question then that they ask, that we already know who he is. Is this not the carpenter? Where did he learn that skill? Joseph, his father, who was present at his birth. So here you begin to get the idea. This is Mark's narrative of his birth. The son of Mary. Whoa! That's not the way this goes. When you have any kind of biblical generations, who's mentioned? Almost always the men. Sorry, ladies. But in this case, they mentioned Mary. Why? Because Mary was virgin. Jesus born of a virgin birth. Joseph was not his physical father. He was his spiritual father, as was God. Joseph taught him his trade and raised him as his own son. But biologically, he was not his father. Biologically, God had sent the Holy Spirit to make this baby come forward and be Jesus, the Messiah. And said, he's got brothers. He's got Joseph and Judah and Simon. So there were other uh, children then that were born to this marriage, but this is interesting when they say he's the son of Mary. They don't say son of Joseph. He's the son of Mary. And they were offended. This is what happens when you start talking to people about Jesus and they have no spiritual knowledge whatsoever, is they are offended first at the gospel. So you have to be careful when you start talking to others about Jesus. You can't just say, hey, he was born of a virgin, lived in Bethlehem, uh, went all around teaching, and then was crucified on a cross. A lot of Gentile-minded people won't understand that gospel message. What kind of message do you have to have? First, the message is Jesus and his life and his teachings that astound people. That's what you kind of have to figure on. And also, his mighty works, that he was raised from the dead. Again, the crux of the gospel is the life, death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. No other spiritual figure that anybody teaches about can make that claim. Nobody. Now, there are some that will try, but you have evidences when you have got the gospels like this that you can say, he was born in a manger as the Son of God, he was raised by a carpenter, taught a trade, he lived his life in a pure way, was crucified on a cross, buried in a tomb, and raised again. That is the crux of the gospel. If you lift him up, Gentiles will be drawn unto him. Now the gospel no longer makes differentiation between Jewish, Samaritan, Gentile. None of that matters because the gospel is a worldwide message. 
So wherever you are and whoever you are, accept this narrative from Mark that Jesus, born of a virgin, raised by a carpenter, taught the carpenter's trade, astounded people with his preaching, with his great wisdom that could come only from uh, God and, and his heavenly Father, and lived a life of purity to save you from sin. This is Mark's gospel, and one which I hope that you'll enjoy, knowing that Mark does have a narrative about the nativity, though it be wee little and pretty quick. Thanks for watching. Be watching next for Luke's account of the birth of Jesus.